actually engaged or am I dreaming? No, you're not dreaming. I love you. Nothing is going to stop me from marrying you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my food. You know, I thought I was going to starve to death. No one's coming, Alistair. What are you doing here, Eve? I'm here to do something I should have done decades ago. I'm going to kill you, Alistair. Who could that be this time of night? Hello? Oh, okay, great. Thank you very much. Who's that? All right. Now, I don't want to fight about this because we need to present a united front. Okay, what are you talking about and who is that? That was the driver who is here to take little Ethan to boarding school. He is outside. What? I just, I can't take this, Mama. I don't want to be Gertrude anymore. I just want to go to Ethan. I want to tell him I'm alive. I want to live openly with my children as their mother. I know, but you know that that's impossible, especially Juanita's still on the loose. It's too dangerous. Just think of all the risks you've taken already. Gwen saw you, Teresa. I drugged her, Mama. She thinks that I'm a figment of her imagination. Don't be too sure of that. You have to stop them now. Sweetheart, what's the matter, mijo? Even after Uncle Ethan promised me that he wouldn't, they're going to send me away to boarding school. And they're going to make me go tonight. Congratulations on coming back from the dead. Not too many people can pull that off. Yeah, I hear it's happened a lot in this family. Yes, it has. I've done it. So is Julian. My parents. Must be a family talent. Where did you go? Don't change the subject. I've been here, Aunt Sheridan. Always watching. Always waiting for my chance. And now it's here. It's time for you to be punished. I'm so sorry for what happened. You made it happen! You had to choose which one of us to save on that cliff. And you chose that pimp instead of your own nephew. You dropped me off that cliff to die on Sheridan. I had no choice. Spike had information. He knew where my son was. I had to get my son back. Sure that you understand that. Yeah, and why should I? I'm your nephew, and we both know you don't care about me. But don't worry. Your death won't be as painful as mine was. I fell onto jagged rocks. You're just gonna get a bullet in the brain. It'll be like turning off the lights. don't want to murder me. Why not? I've murdered plenty of others before you. <laughs> no need to kill me in my bed to achieve my death, doctor. With your uh, recent medical record, all I'd have to do is sign up to be one of your patients and I would be dead before the year was out. Yeah, very funny. You can't kill me. You took the Hippocratic Oath. You devoted your entire life to preserving the lives of others. I just think of it as eradicating a deadly disease. Eve, you can't. Everyone in... Harmony has tried to kill me once, but here I am. 
no one succeeds. Uh, yeah. Well, I will. You know, I really ought to send a thank you note to the person who stabbed you in the back. That's how you got to be in this hospital instead of the prison and hospital. I got access to you here. Oh, you're at my mercy now, Alistair. And you were finally... Oh, God, you were going to pay. Pay for what? I've done nothing to you lately. I'm doing this for someone else. You are a crazy woman. Yeah. Crazy. Maybe. But at least I had a chance to be normal. And that's more than Vincent ever got. And he was your own grandson. <laughs> Should I run for it? He could still shoot me. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. You've, uh, you've been through a lot. You have no idea. I wanted to scare you. You did. I wanted you to be just as afraid as I was that night on the cliff. I never meant to hurt you. Yeah. Well, you were my only hope. But when Spike said the magic word, Marty, I knew I was going to die. I could see it in your eyes. Even before you made your decision, I just knew that I was going to die. He's my son, and I thought he was dead. Another crane who's come back from the dead. Yes. And I had to get him back, no matter what the cost. A mother will do anything for her child. Can you understand that? Is that what this is all about, your long-lost son, Vincent? Queen? Freakorama. Uh, don't you call him names. Weren't you surprised to find out he was alive? And you knew. I know everything that goes on in this Harmony Circus. Come one, come all. See the sideshow, and that thing of yours could make up its mind of whether it's a man or a woman, gay or straight, until it got dressed in the morning. Shut up! And he's a little murderous freak. <laughs> All right, yes, of course, I'm the one that really turned him into a murdering psycho, huh? Or maybe it just runs in the family. I don't understand. It was all decided that I wasn't going. I know it was, sweetheart. I don't want to go to boarding school. I don't want to go away. I don't understand this. I mean, how could Ethan do this? I mean, how could he agree to this? This is not Ethan, Mia. This is Gwen's doing. She wants to send little Ethan away so Ethan won't think about you. Yeah, but Mama, Ethan said that he wanted little Ethan to stay here at home. Can't you stop this, Mom? Please? You have to keep Gwen from sending me away. Gwen? I, I can't believe you what went ahead. Like no, I can't believe you made these arrangements, all right? Teresa would never have wanted... To listen. Just for a second, okay? Now, whenever I doubt myself, you are always first in line to give me a hug and tell me not to worry, right? Now, when you doubt yourself, why are you not coming to me? No, you're consulting Teresa's ghost. This is our life now, Ethan, and I will not compete with Teresa's ghost, especially not when I think I'm doing the right thing. You're not doing the right thing. Then prove it to me, because I think the child psychologist, he was pretty convincing. Ethan, sending little Ethan to boarding school is the right thing, and deep down, you know that. Now, are you going to listen to your wife's wishes, or are you going to continue to consult Teresa's ghost, telling me what you think Teresa may or may not have wanted? You need to make your choice, and you need to make it now. That night on the cliff still gives me nightmares. I'm sorry. If I had to do it all over again, 
I would make the same choice. Because I'm a mother. Do you understand what it meant for me to get my son back? Yeah, I understand. Because I'd do anything for my son. What? Yes, my son. I just gave birth to him. Okay, then. Why don't you just sit here and calm yourself down? And I'll go make us some tea. Uh, you know, uh, chamomile is my favorite. And then we can sit and have a nice long talk about this. You aren't going anywhere, Blondie. <laughs> it's still so hard to believe. They're actually officially engaged. That happens to the best of us. <laughs> we have our whole lives ahead of us. What's our future going to be like? Shoot, I don't have my crystal ball. Well, I know, but we can make some plans. Do you want to stay in Harmony or leave town? Where will we live? Big house or small beach or mountains? How many kids do you want? Oh, and we really have to have a serious discussion about my money. I know you get funny about it, so I just want to make sure you don't mind marrying a rich girl. I don't, I don't know, okay? Why don't... I mean, we don't have to decide it all tonight, right? I know. I just like thinking about the future with you. Okay. Well, I've got an idea. How about we just focus on the wedding first? Ah. Oh, what did you do to my room? It's gorgeous. You like it? <laughs> Name to please? Oh. <laughs> Louise, <laughs> what about our guest downstairs? I'm supposed to be getting changed into my traveling suit. What's that thing on your finger? And now mine? <laughs> Her husband and wife. And I figured we should make it official. I sort of thought we would wait until we got to the hotel. Yeah, oh, I sort of thought that we'd start our honeymoon, like, right now. <laughs> Vincent, calm down. You do not want to shoot me. Yeah, says who? I want to see your blood on the walls. No, you don't. No, you don't. You tried to shoot me before and you couldn't. Well, if at first you don't succeed... Please, Vincent, don't do this. Look, I don't know how to make you understand, but I am telling you the truth. I never meant to harm you. I just wanted to get my son back. You didn't need your son back. You have everything. You're rich, beautiful, powerful. You're blonde. Why would you need your son when you have the whole world? I am a mother. There is nothing more important to a mother than her child. Poor Marty. It's so sad when a kid loses his mother. I should know. You missed. Well, I won't miss again. Ah, little Evie. Can't use a knife. Can't use a knife. Too brutal. A weapon for her. Oh, you me. Oh, that's nothing. You wait till I shove this into your own rancid heart. <laughs> Don't you worry, sweetheart. You are not going anywhere. What can you do about it? They think you're only the nanny. Uh, sweetheart, how do you know this is happening? Two of the staff came into my room and packed me up. There's a car outside waiting to take me away right now. This time of night. I wouldn't stop, Gwen. Can't you tell the truth? Take off the disguise, Mom. Honey, I can't. I can't. Our whole family is in danger. From the Anita person? Yes. I can't tell anything I'm alive. I can't tell anyone I'm alive. If I do, we will all be killed. Gertrude, what are you talking about? Vincent, you don't want more blood on your hands. That's the good thing about guns. 
You don't get all messy. It just about destroyed me that night to let go of you on the cliffs. But look, you said you have a son. I mean, doesn't your son mean everything to you? Isn't the world just meaningless if you didn't have him? I adore my son. You see? He's just been born, but already he's opened up a whole new world for me. And I'll never forget the first moment when he took his first breath and started to cry. It was the most moving moment of my life. You thought you could kill me, huh? huh? You thought you could kill me. It's impossible. Not you. But the reverse is very simple for me. Prepare to meet your maker. <laughs> Gertrude, what are you saying? Something about someone being killed. <gasps> killed? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. What was I saying? Um, well, well, we were just uh, uh, talking about how uh, the teachers at boarding school would be very skilled. <laughs> yeah. But well, that's actually hardly the point, is it, Gertrude? No. Um, actually, uh, well, the three of us... We were just talking about how we don't think that little Ethan's mother would want to send little Ethan to boarding school. Gertrude, this decision is none of your concern. Ethan, tell me the truth, please. You promised me you can't change your mind now and send little Ethan to boarding school. Ethan. Look, Gwen and I talked about this at length, and she is my wife. And we are a team. We are a team, and we're going to make this decision together. But it's wrong. Pilar, do you really want to deny him this wonderful opportunity? Look, it, it really is. It's an awfully good school. You know, that, along with taking into account what the child psychologist said, made us decide that sending Lily to boarding school was the best thing to do. And he's going to go tonight. No. <sighs> My baby boy. He's so innocent. So untouched by anything this evil world can do to him. I bet you love him. More than anything. I want him to have the very best of everything. Then you can understand why I had to do everything I had to to get my son back. <laughs> thinking about oh wait, wait don't tell me you are planning where we're going to retire no what no. silly i'm thinking about our wedding night oh i could get into some of that <laughs> we don't have to catch up we're both in here after the wedding and the reception's going on downstairs you're in your wedding gal mm -hmm. i'm in my tuxedo mm -hmm. It was a beautiful wedding, wasn't it? <laughs> Did you see the look on Esme's face when she got the bouquet? Well, she was horrified. <laughs> I don't think she wants to get married anytime soon. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Esme right now. I don't want to have such a beautiful bride standing right in front of me. <laughs> Are we having the same fantasy? I don't know. Esme caught the bouquet. You can read my mind. No. <laughs> I'm a liar! Give me the gun! You're a snake. All that talk of babies and children pretending to be my friend? I am your friend. I'm trying to help you. If you shoot me, you will go to jail and you will never see your child again. No, I won't go to jail because I'm a crane. Yes, me. I'm a crane too. Though you wouldn't know it, I had nothing. Look how you live. How you've always lived. I'm a crane, so why didn't I get to live this way? Tell me, why? I really thought 
Anyone who tries to kill me has got to be a tower of strength. And what are you? You're a whore, a drug addict, and the mother of a freak. <laughs> You're stabbing me in the heart, Ethan. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Mr. Winthrop, are you really going to do this? I mean, after everything that you said about Teresa, I mean, are you... Are really going to send this little boy away? Gertrude, you are the nanny. This is not your place. You need to go. But I'm uh, please, Gertrude. You have no say in this matter. Just go. Don't. Ethan, you listen to me, please. Pilar, you have talked this subject into the ground. Ethan and I have decided that boarding school is the best decision for little Ethan. I'm his grandmother. Have I no say? To be honest, no. Ethan. Look at this little face. Please, she's devastated. Can you really hurt him like this? Contrary to popular belief, I don't think that all men are created equal. Well, that's not exactly news, you racist bastard. Oh, I am not talking about race, Eve. I'm talking about talent. You divvy up the people on this planet. There's only two kinds. Alphas, who run the planet. And then the betas, who do the heavy lifting. <laughs> I am an alpha, and you will always be inferior to me. <laughs> and it's not only you, but it's everyone in this town. In this town. Because the only reason that Sam Bennett was able to arrest me is because I was a little incapacitated with a knife on my back. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alistair. This is just one of those nasty jobs that us betas have to do. Taking out the garbage. Please don't send me away. Listen, don't worry. I know you're going to love it. Listen to him, Ethan. Please don't do this. You're destroying this little boy. Is that what you want? Of course not. Okay. I know that you love him. I mean, you adopted him. But do you think that cutting him off from those that know him and love him is the right thing to do? Look, I, I know you're concerned, Pilar, really, but this is a decision that Gwen and I came to together. As a team. Right. Pilar, she is my wife. And even I had mixed feelings about boarding school. I did, but I, I grew to love it. And I think you're letting your emotions get the best of you. And I have to trust one's judgment on this. Excuse us one moment, please. <clears throat> you bitch. You don't give a damn about little Ethan. You're just trying to get Teresa out of Ethan's heart. Well, it won't work. Well, I'm Ethan's partner now, and unless your dead daughter walks through that door, little Ethan <clears throat> is going to boarding school. If only she could. Well, Pilar, see, I'm not stupid. I know what I saw upstairs. I saw Teresa alive and well in Ethan's arms. So, I also know that she would never let her little boy be sent away. Oh, that's what this is about. You're trying to smoke Teresa out? She's alive, isn't she? Of course not. Well... We'll see, because if she is, she'd never let her little boy be sent away from Harmony. Mr. Winthrop? Oh. Oh, there's something that I have to tell you. 
Being a crane is not a ticket to paradise, but if you want to live like a crane now, I will make that happen. Do you really think that I believe anything that you say? I'm a family joke, and I know why. It's because I'm not a blonde. What? All the crane women, blondes. You, Ivy, fancy and pretty, even if it comes out of a bottle. Now that's why I was thrown out into the cold. Because I'm not a blonde. But that'll soon change. Gertrude, I already asked you to leave. This has nothing to do with you. Oh, oh, but it does. See, after talking with your husband about Teresa, I understand her. Mr. Winthrop, there's something that I need to tell you about Teresa and me. No, Teresa. You can't tell Ethan you're alive. Juanita will kill us all. <sighs> Isn't it pretty? I like being a blonde. Do you think it's the right length for me? Yes, it's very becoming. Thank you. I thought so. Vincent, I'm so sorry for what happened up at the cliff. But everything turned out all right. You have a child. Now we can just end all this and you can go be with your son and I can be with mine. Oh. Don't worry about Marty, Aunt Sheridan. I'll take care of him after you're dead. What? What are you talking about? Don't you dare hurt him. Hurt him? <laughs> well, don't you get it, silly? I'll be Marty's mother. Now, we can't mess up the whole organization of the family. I'm going to be the new Sheridan Crane. Gertrude, I asked you to leave. Ethan, this is getting silly. The car is waiting for little Ethan. Wait. Gertrude, what can you tell me about you and Teresa? You can't shoot me, Eve. Oh, I bet I can. Yeah, lots of inferior people pull the triggers on guns. Yeah, don't, 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 don't be absurd about this, Eve. I mean, I, there must be a way of working things out. And let's not forget, I'm a, a very, very wealthy man. And I know how concerned you are about Vincent. I could set the both of you up. So far, far away from here, with all the money in the world. You get him everything he needs. And all the love he's never had. I think, <laughs> I think uh, that would uh, square things between us, huh? Ethan, why are you listening to the nanny? Gertrude's a very understanding woman. Oh, for God's sake. Gwen, listen, I decided to trust your judgment about sending little Ethan away. Now, please trust mine. I don't know why, but I think we should listen to her. Maybe having an outside opinion will shed some light on the situation, okay? Gertrude, go ahead. Okay. Um... Please don't interrupt until you hear everything. But I have to say, I have to admit something. Something huge. Think about it, Eve. Living in paradise with your your son daughter thing. Able to give it all of the all of the, the therapy it needs. Just think of how happy you would be. It always comes down to money with you, doesn't it, Alist? And you can't buy your way out of this one. Because the only thing that would make me happy is to see your heart stop beating. You probably will be shocked at what I have to say. Don't tell the truth. Please, Teresa, don't tell the truth. You see, uh, I spent some time in the attic. Going through Teresa's things. Wait, what? What? Don't tell me you were trying to steal something. Oh, no, ma'am. I wasn't trying to steal anything. It's just after learning so much about Teresa, I began to identify with her. Um, 
Like uh, the fact that she was poor. I'm poor. Oh, she became a princess. I had my makeover. Oh, it was kind of embarrassing, but I, I do hope that I, I can become a princess too one day. Good luck finding a blind prince. A anyway, um, it just it made me feel closer to Teresa to go through her things, and when I did, well, I found this letter. I mean, I just, I'd read a little bit of it, and, well, it's, it's, it's about, uh, Jane and little Ethan, and, well, I think that you and Gwen should read this letter before you decide to send little Ethan to boarding school. Hmm. Look at that. My hair is short like yours. But, of course, I look prettier than you. You idiot. You look absolutely ridiculous. You can't become me by popping on a wig. Do not yell at me. I'm a crane. <laughs> Putting on a wig does not make you a crane. Shooting people does. All of you do it. You worm. You insufferable little sicko. You shut up! No! You revolting wacko. If you're gonna shoot me, I'm gonna say whatever the hell I want. What is that supposed to be? Look at the date. My God, uh, this was the day before she left for Mexico. When she knew she was walking right into danger and might never come back. You can't give me a break. These are instructions about little Ethan and Jane. And Gwen, it literally says that she does not want her children to be sent away to school like the cranes. And that she wants her children to stay in harmony and be close to her family who loves them. Yes! I don't believe this. Don't get me angry. Come on! Get it over with, you moron! But I promise you, if you kill me, you will not get away with it. Because I am a crane, and that means something. You will be hunted like a dog. Yeah, well, I'm used to it. I've been treated like a dog my whole life. You know, turn around. I'm tired of you. It's time for you to die. What? Too much of a coward to shoot me face to face? Come on! Right here! Right between the eyes! Turn around! Fine. Have it your way. Shoot me in the back! That's not the way a real crane would do it. We're living in fantasy land. Something always goes wrong for us in this town, so why should a ring on my finger mean things will turn out any different for no, us? Stop worrying. Why? So far, we haven't been able to get anywhere near happily ever after. Listen to me. Our wedding is going to be perfect, and our lives will be perfect. Forever. I don't want to believe that. I'm going to make it happen. Just tell me you love me. I do love you. You're the only woman in the world for me. Ethan, do you really believe this? I mean, a letter from the dead, kind of convenient, right? Gertrude, who is completely against sending little Ethan to boarding school, happens to find this miracle letter in the nick of time. Gwen, we have a responsibility to Teresa. We should respect and honor her wishes here. Okay. Okay, Ethan, this is not even Teresa's handwriting. Teresa had chicken scratch. This is beautiful handwriting. Gertrude probably wrote this, right, Gertrude? Didn't you write this? No, no. Okay. Well, then why don't you prove it? Just write something else and we can compare. What's wrong? Can't force yourself to do it? Stop making fun of me. You're 
You're right, Aunt Sheridan. A bullet in the back is too good for you. I have a much better plan in mind. So, Gertrude, why don't you write something and then we can just compare? Actually, there's there's no need for that. I have a letter that, that Issa wrote to comfort me when Antonio died, and I always have it with me. Yeah, Ethan, please, you can compare the handwriting. It's very personal. together on Sheridan but we will now we're gonna have a barrel of fun together well I guess you're off the hook okay your mom didn't want you to go to boarding school and we will never go against your mother's wishes all right thank you I'm glad you made the right choice Ethan finally how do you do it Teresa even from the grave you managed to ruin my life Now are you convinced my daughter's dead? Yeah. We'll have no more of your nonsense. Oh, hey. Now that you don't have to go to boarding school, I think it's time we have a big late night snack. What do you think? You bet. Dagwoods? He wants Dagwoods. Yeah, how about chocolate milkshakes? No, huge, huge chocolate milkshakes. <laughs> oh, Sheridan, won't you be surprised? It's payback time, bitch. <laughs> you made a choice and let me go. Well, now, let's see how much you like going over the falls to your death. <clears throat> Damn it! I missed! You're a mad woman. Yeah, but I won't miss again. She's really dead. But, I mean, Pilar, I saw her. What was I saying? Oh, yes. You're seeing Teresa because of your guilty conscience. And this is just, this is unbelievable. I mean, Teresa's dead, and, and I still lose every battle. When am I ever going to be free of her? Never. I'll be right here watching you every step of the way.